Howdy folks, welcome to Run 8. Today we're out at Cal Portland Cement, which is just west of Mojave. Kind of up in the mountains a little bit. And we've got a big old heavy train here of uh, two bay covered hoppers. So if we run back here and look, they just look like boxcars. That's because I don't have the skin pack for this particular covered hopper. Uh, they're little shorty guys, little two bays. But everything else is simulated as far as the length. Scales it to the correct length. And of course the weight is the same. Everything is the same except it just looks like a boxcar. Instead of looking like a covered hopper. Um, I don't deal with these cars a whole lot. So I just never have bought the uh, skin pack. I think there's, there's at least one, maybe two skin packs I would need that are 10 bucks a piece. To make these look good. Look like two bay covered hoppers. Anyway, that's, wh that's why they uh, look like that. If you're not familiar with Run 8, everything works the same, but you can buy uh, skin packs for certain cars. The base game comes with some cars, and then there's various packs. So I've got three or four of the packs, mostly for the mixed freight, which I usually deal with. So there's Cal Portland Cement off in the background, and I've just gathered up all these filled uh, covered hoppers. And we had some power sitting here waiting for us. And we're going to take this train down to Mojave. Now, it's a pretty steep grade down to Mojave. I don't know if it's 2% or so. It's it's pretty steep. So I'm going to have to be a little careful. And we'll see how it goes. I'm not the best train driver in the world. I'm still learning a lot. We'll give it a try. Uh, the brakes are pumped up. Go ahead and hop on here. Let's get up in the cab. And I probably ought to go make sure the switches are all aligned. Got Bob with us over there, as usual. Uh, air brakes are all charged. We've got a full suppression brake setting. Because we're just kind of sitting here on a hill. Everything's locked down. Let's go check the switches real quick. I normally clean these up behind me, but I may have forgotten. I had a little trouble getting up... Had a little trouble getting up the hill. Stopped correctly. Not uh, set this. It needs to be in the reverse. To get out of here, it looks like anyway. I see several of these switches. I didn't. Let's go ahead and put those in the normal position. So the plan for today's video is just to take this down to Mojave Yard. Let's see how that goes. Uh, this is ready to be switched. All the coal cars have been emptied. Got an empty string of coal cars sitting over there. And we've got some cars down in Mojave Yard waiting to come up here. But that'll be for another time. Today we're just going to try to get this big old heavy train down off the hill. Me. <laughs> so let's hop back in the cab. And actually before we do that, let's bring up, I think it's this key. Yeah, so we're 6,200 tons. Got 45 loaded cars, and uh, we're just over 2,100 feet long. So pretty heavy for 2,000 feet. Let's see how it goes. Let's hop on the train, back in the cab. So my thought was, and bear in mind, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm still learning how to operate heavy trains. My thought was to put in full dynamics, have those you know ready to go. Uh, and then we'll release the brakes and, and see what happens. <laughs> so that's the plan. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take off all the hand brakes. Okay, we didn't start sliding down the hill yet, so that's a good sign. So I just pushed F5. That takes off all the hand brakes on the entire train, locos and cars. The next thing we're going to do is go ahead and get this in. Uh, let's see, I want to be in forward. Get that dynamic brakes into setup. No, actually, what I should do, I should have done a brake test. Getting ahead of myself. So I'm going to go ahead and do Shift F5, which will put the handbrakes back on on it. I shouldn't have taken off. And we should do a brake test. Just make sure everything's going to release as it should. 
Now, if you're not familiar with Run 8, this display here shows me the brake status as well as the coupler force. So this top bar is coupler force. White is like zero and then goes towards purple the more force you have. So most of the force, a little bit of force in the middle of the terrain, which makes sense sitting here. On. And this red color, we have a full suppression brake application on. So first thing we're going to do is release the brakes. You can see our equalizing reservoir goes to 90, and then the train should start releasing. And as that change propagates to the train, you'll see this bar slowly go to white. And the handbrake should hold us, so we should be okay. I'm going to go ahead and release the Benda as well. So these four dots are my four locomotives. And then something new in update seven is, and I don't fully understand it, but there's a dynamic brake like interlock solenoid or something like that, which is supposed to release the air and the locomotive brakes when you go into dynamics. It's supposed to keep them bailed off. So we're gonna try and test that because you can't have random failures of that solenoid on the locomotives. So I'm gonna do my brake test. This is not official or anything. Uh, we've got a full release, and our flow is getting down there. I want to get the flow down a little more. Let's, there's notch one. You'll see the compressor RPM wasn't quite full at idle, so we'll go up to notch one, pump a little more air, this flow down a little ways, and we do have a EOT ID, so we're talking to the end of train device back there. See on the rear, the brake pipe pressure is coming back up towards 90. So it looks like we've got a full release. Now run eight doesn't visually simulate the brake shoes moving. So this, this bar uh, gives you that information because you can't walk the train and see if the brake shoes are on or off. Flow is coming right down. I'm going to put a brake in here. It's going to take a little bit to get the brake pipe back up. I'll be back in just a bit. All right, we've got 88 pounds showing on the rear. The OT flow is way down. Presser is not even running anymore, so I think we're good. So I've got the independent released, and I'm going to go ahead and make my uh, initial brake application. That'll be a six pound reduction. And I'm not gonna bail the loco brakes because we need to test that uh, DBI. Dynamic brake interlock valve, I think. Still learning that new feature. Uh, so that looks good. We can see the brake shoes have applied. It's some slightly different. It simulates each car. Each little square here is a car. So that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and do like another 10 pounds. Take it on down to 70, 75. We should get a darker orange as that change propagates through the entire terrain. Now we're only, you know, 2,100 feet long, so it doesn't take too long. On a really long terrain, once you get like a mile long or more, it takes a, a, quite a while for that change to propagate throughout the whole terrain. But we've got a, a good set. So that's looking good. So now we're going to put the reverser in forward. And the way I understand it, I need to engage the dynamic brakes. And then it, it will bail off all the locos. It keeps them bailed off when dynamics are engaged. So the, the uh, valve is working on all four locos. So that's good. Bring that back out of dynamic. Reverse her back to neutral. Now we want to make sure we get a clean release everywhere. So, release. See if the compressor kicks on. I'm going to go ahead and kick it up to notch one here. Reverse the neutral. So we can get full compressor RPM as we pump that air back into all the uh, reservoirs. 
And it looks like we're getting a good release. We don't have any sticky brake shoes. Every once in a while, you'll get some sticky brake shoes. And might have to cycle the brake application a couple times. We definitely want brakes because we've got uh, quite a grade. All right, flow is coming right down. That's good. I'm going to go ahead and put an initial application back on, and then we're going to take off the hand. Let that get good and set. And in this case, I will bail off. It's working. All right, so we're going to put the independent back on full for the locos. And again, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm still learning. So feel free to comment if you're a real loco engineer, or if you have some knowledge of everything I'm doing wrong. <laughs> so it looks like we got a pretty good set throughout the terrain. So again, I'm going to take the handbrakes off, but let's get our dynamics set up for so back to idle, first turn forward. Get our dynamics set up. And let's just go ahead and put that in full brake eight. Handbrakes are coming off train not moving that's good now I'm going to release the train brakes and that train should start pushing up against us Independent. And I thought we would start moving, but maybe enough of the train is on that flat part back there. I might have misjudged this. Let me go to outside view. So the hill comes up. Actually, the hill stops about there. So there may be enough weight just sitting there that we're, we didn't actually start moving. I thought we would. So, slightly different approach. We can come back off the dynamics. You can see the accelerometer is kind of wiggling a little bit. It's not sure what to do. Now the back of the train's moving. That's what the little beep means. See, we have EOT move. And if I pull up, I think it's this. Yeah, there we go. We should, once we move enough, we should get a great percentage. Yeah, 1% grade right here. And as more of that train comes off the hump back there, we'll start picking up speed. All right, let's go ahead and get into setup again. Starting to accelerate. We're already up to six mile an hour. Look at that slack action slamming into us. <laughs> Poor train.
And we'll see how it behaves. I probably want to get some air on the train as well. Because, you know, once you hit full dynamics, then what do you do? You don't have anything left. So uh, we're moving it. Basically 10 miles an hour. So let's go ahead and get a just an initial reduction on. We'll see how it does with that. Keeps the loco brakes bailed. Keep just a little bit of amps on the dynamics here. We don't don't want to be slamming the train back and forth. That's a good way to break a coupler with this much weight. Okay, we're coming up on 15 miles an hour. Still at about 1% downgrade. Off the distance there, you can see the plant power, and then we got this long string of empty coal cars. So I'll need to come up here with some loaded cars and service this at some point. Right, we're coming up rapidly on the speed limit, so let's go ahead and get more dynamics in. Accelerometer is kind of all over the place, but you just kind of look for trends. We're mostly holding steady. I think this increases to 2%. It's been a long time since I took a train down here. I think I've only done it once before. Back off the dynamics just a hair. Hear the fans whining. Dissipates all that heat. Yeah, the grade's starting to pick up a little bit. We do have some curves that'll help slow us down a bit as well. I'm going to get another notch of dynamics. Just don't want it to get away from me. Yeah, we're up to almost 2% now. Start easing in some more dynamics. also counterintuitive. You have to do minus to increase the brakes because you're going the opposite direction, basically. We can get into brake four, 540 amps. Still accelerating. The curve is going to help us slow down some, though. A few more amps on. You want to make gradual changes. Keep that slack action from destroying couplers. Grades almost 2%. And I think it's about 2% most of the way down to Mojave. Never have too many screenshots. 
We're looking good. Take some amps off. And looks like we've got a grade crossing coming up. I don't know who would be out here in the desert, but you never know. Just tweak on the dynamics here to keep it around 20. Up to 2.07 now. I don't know the route, so I'll just keep that uh, info up there. And I think we're going to be okay with just the initial reduction. We've got six pounds on the air. If I start getting up to where I'm having to hit like break six, break seven, then we'll definitely need to add more air. But I don't think it gets really any steeper than this. I think it's around 2% all the way. Still trending up. We're going to notch her up to break five. Kind of in a straightaway now, so we don't have that friction from the curve. Uh, but we've got a little S curve here. If I remember right. Yeah, we've got a little S curve. Past the solar panels here. So that will help us slow us down. Ooh. Take off some dynamic. Anticipation of that. Go up. There we go. Now we can see the big solar farm. Grade's actually decreasing a bit. Slow and steady wins the race. Hear those fans back there. I believe there's hand throw. Yeah, there's hand throws. I'm not sure how they're set. We'll get down and basically stop at the Y. The Y entering the um, hobby yard down there. And then I believe to get into the yard, we actually have to take the main. Not really like a big long switching lead. Come off the dynamics a little bit more because we got these curves and less grade. I was looking this up on Google Maps, and it's it's pretty accurate. I think that all the track is pretty much exactly how it is in real life. And it's just as brown, too. <laughs> there is a big solar farm here. All the way back down to break two. There's no signals on here. This is just a spur that goes up to uh, Cal Portland. And I believe this is part of the Oak Creek uh, route. It's like a $20 add-on. You get, uh, I think it's Arvin and Oak Creek. Two little branch lines that go off as one $20 pack. Yeah, 
And I like locals, so I got the uh, Arvin and Oak Creek, and then I also got the Trona, which I haven't been out on yet, other than just flying around. And I've been talking instead of paying attention. We need to get some more amps back on the dynamics. As our grade came up, and we're going to be straightening out here. We'll make gradual changes. No need to panic. Back to 2% grade. And we're coming out of that curve back there. Need a little more amps on the dynamics. slowed back down to 20. We're just a little over 21. No problem. Bob will probably yell at me a little bit, but that's okay. He's always yelling. <laughs> you watch any of my live streams, we, we joke about Bob the conductor. In the older locos, he stares right at you. with just raw judgment in his eyes. All right, can we see Mojave yet? No, it's down over the hill. I don't know how long this video is going to be. We're just running down to Mojave Yard, however long that takes. He's looking good, so we're going to back off just a bit. Let's see, is it this button? I remember the button to change the MFDs. That's okay. That's the rate I'm driving the train. Control? No, oh, that just moves me. You can change the screens on the MFDs, but I don't remember. All right, 2% grade, getting the speed back under control. Wind Farm City out here. Vestus. Hear the roar of the dynamics. Lots of fans. Turning all that brake force into heat. Alright, we better get back in the cab and see what's going on. Getting a little fast. 
Uh, but the grade let up a little bit. Oops. And we got another curve. I think once we go through these curves, we should be able to see Mahat Guard. Should be getting close. It's not too far of a run. Oh, we're waiting. Let me just get a look here. It's MFD. Oh, it's Alt. And then the Z and A. Okay, it's Alt. I hadn't tried Alt yet. There we go. Oh, actual temps and everything are looking good. Through the curve. Let's take a look at our train back there. Don't see any smoke rolling off any axles, so that's good. Back out of the amps here. That curve is helping. We're back down to 1.7. One thing I kind of wish Run 8 had was some kind of mini map. Like the dispatcher screen, you know, if you're on the main line, you can tell roughly where you're at. But when you're learning the route, it would be super helpful to have some kind of map shows you where you're at all the relations around um, but if I pull up let's see is it this button that's industry 10 this button there we go I'll turn the milepost tags on you should see Avi here soon thought we were getting close Reduction to 50. Oh, we got 2.7 miles to go. Yeah, getting closer. So that'll be near the Y. Or near the yard limits, anyway. This is going to be a little bit of a longer video. Oh, there it is. I'm starting to see some stuff. Signs of civilization. Looking good back there. We are, we are super heavy for this short of a train. I mean, we've got a lot of weight behind us. That's why we're being careful. He says as he's two mile an hour over speed. <laughs> Get some more amps back on. But that curve was gonna slow me down a little more than it did. Turn that extra info back on. So 15 is probably the Y and 10 would be the yard. A few miles out. Maybe three from the yard itself. percent grid we'll hold it about 660 that's been about where it wants to be so before the days of dynamic breaks I guess you had been would have been setting the retainer valves. That is simulated. I've never used them. 
and do that if you if you wanted to. The force is looking pretty good. You can see naturally that we're coming downhill, so most of the force is bunched up in the front of the terrain. It's interesting. We've got some slight differences there, like every other car. That's kind of weird. Just the randomness, I guess. Slight differences in this is basically the brake cylinder pressure in each car. Just a bit more. Grade is lessening up. So if I click on a car, you can see everything is simulated. We've got the brake pipe pressure coming through that car and the brake pipe. We've got the auxiliary reservoir. We've got the emergency reservoir. They're all charged up. We've got about 12 pounds on the brake cylinder. Get 11 pounds on that car back there for whatever reason. Just slight differences in, you know, distance from the head end and whatnot. For the first car, brake pipes, 84. We should have about the same on the... No, we got 84 across the board. Looks like the... Kind of the further from the train, maybe got a couple PSI difference on the brake cylinders. There you go. All right, there's Mojave Yard. You can see all the train cars sitting down there. Here's the start of the Y. So I want to stop before the Y because I'm not 100% sure yet which direction I want to go to take the main to get backed into. The That'll be for another time. We're almost there. So far, so good. I don't want to call it too early. You know, the grade crossing. I'll probably put some more air on. Once we pass this crossing. Get slowed down. Two point one percent. It looks like the initial reduction is plenty of air to come down, at least with this load. We go Holt Road, we got the milepost tags telling us where we're at. But then I don't know where Holt Road is. important on the extra messages. Let's go ahead and turn that off. We know where we're at now. We can see the yard. So, I don't remember if it's that train, but I know all these coal hoppers here, those go up to Cal Portland. I think those tankers do too. Then we've got this set in here. I'm not sure what that's for. So I started with uh, a world called a very populated SoCal made by a forum member from over at the depot server. Highly recommended. Should be a link in the video description. Great community. Ton of good resources for the game. And he made a world that's already like populated and set up to kind of match real life. That's what I started with when I started my railroad. Um, so I'm not 100% sure what that power is for with the four cars. I'll have to look at the tags and see. is lessening up so that's good I 
going to hit my counter. I'll make sure we're past that grade crossing. I think we should be. I kind of want to just roll up this Y. It looks like we'll be going that direction. But I'll have to set switches and get mainline authority and all that kind of stuff to actually get this train into the yard. Mojave set up a little strangely like that. Now we're at 15, so we need to keep on slowing down. We got down to 15. Taking amps off the dynamics here. Let the air do most of the work. Taking a little too much off. We're going to be past the uh, road crossing, so we'll be blocking that. Our grade has just about leveled out down here. All those loaded coal cars are going to be headed up to Cal Portland. I'm not 100% sure how to switch it, though. There's not too many options up there. Slack's not too bad. Keep the train stretched out. Go ahead and put on some more air. Just to make sure we stop. That switch is aligned to run us right into that train. So we definitely do want to stop here. here go. Excellent. All right, we made it down to the bottom of the hill. So that'll be it for this video. I just wanted to uh, come down the hill with this train and see how we did. We did just fine. A few little mistakes here and there. That'll be it for this one. Thanks as always for watching, folks. Take care.